What's up guys, back again with another video in the Java web development series. This time I'm going to teach you how to make your first Java web application. So the first thing we need to do is install Apache Tomcat, which is basically a web server that is able to implement Java servlets, JSP, and other Java technologies specified by Java Enterprise Edition specifications. So Apache Tomcat, let me zoom in for you, Tomcat. So just click the first one, and what we need to do is find the download thing for it. Currently, Java 9 is the, you know, the, the release for it. Uh, Tomcat 10 looks to be an alpha, but everyone is using Tomcat 9. Well, not everybody, but you know what I mean. So let's find what we need to download. So 64-bit Windows zip. That should be what we need here. So we'll just click that, and it's going to download it for us as a zip file. And what we need to do is find a safe place to put this. So you can put it wherever you want. So just make sure that you don't delete it and you know where you put it. I'm not really sure where I have mine currently, but I'll just put it on this F drive here. Um, so we'll have two installations, I guess. So we're just gonna open this up using WinRAR. You can use whatever you want to open up your zip file. So what you're gonna do is just drag and drop this folder to that safe place, and it'll just load it for you. Um, so just give that a second. All right, so the, the file is done transferring. So now we basically have installed Apache Tomcat on our system. It's as simple as that. So now we can create a new Java web application within IntelliJ. So click new project and then click Java Enterprise. Make sure, by the way, you need Java uh, IDEA Ultimate. So if you don't have the ultimate version, please get it or at least get the student license so that you can download it for free. You really need that, it's important. But yeah, so go to Java Enterprise. The first thing you can do is set your version in the Java EE version, but then also you need to specify the application server. So if Tomcat doesn't appear for you, here already you can click new tomcat server tomcat home so we just want to tell intellij where we installed it so mine is on my f drive so just click this on your f drive where you installed it then click ok and now it's able to recognize the version and all that important information where you installed tomcat then click ok and now we can use this and before we create a new project we first need to go down here and click web application so that's going to basically, you know, have all the, the template set up basically for the web application. So that's very important. And that's all we need for now. So I click next. And now we'll just give our project a name. So we'll call this, um, we'll call this first web app. That's what, we, that's what I'm gonna call it. You can call it whatever you want, obviously. And then click finish. And that's gonna start loading the project. All right, so now let's explore what we have in our file structure here. So let's open this up. And of course we have our .idea folder, our source folder for all our Java code. And then we have this special web folder here also, which includes the web-inf folder. And uh, so basically let's take a look at what all this means. So the source folder, like I said, is just gonna include all your Java programs. So including your Java servlets and other Java code. But inside the web folder, you're gonna have all your JSPs, HTML, CSS, all the web stuff, you know? And also you have your web-inf folder and everything inside of here, as we're gonna see in a second, is gonna be hidden from the web application. So currently our index.gsp that was generated for us is currently within the web folder. But if we move inside of the web-inf folder, it will now be hidden from the user so they cannot directly access that page if they want to as a static page, basically. So if we move this out uh, back to where it was, there we go. And if we look inside the folder, we can already see that we have a web.xml folder, which we'll be learning about later in more detail, but this is basically gonna have all our configuration details for our web application and uh, stuff like that. So we don't have to worry about that for now. So let's take a look at our index.gsp file. If we look inside of it here, we can see that we have pretty much HTML, just a regular old HTML that we're used to working with, hopefully. And also we have this special tag here, but this is just telling it that it's, you know, JSP using the like Java and stuff like that. And uh, if you remember what I told you before, JSP is basically just regular HTML with code injected inside of it. So it's really, really cool. And we'll see how to do, use that later on. But so this is gonna enable us to use really dynamic applications to display different stuff to the user depending on what you send to the page. Really, really cool stuff. But you can also, if you want to, if you don't wanna use JSP, you can also make uh, HTML files, you can make CSS files, JavaScript files, anything that you wanna make inside of here, which is pretty cool. Just make sure it's inside the web folder, of course. And yeah, so let's test this out. Let's try running this web application so we can see if it actually works. So if we click the run button here, it's gonna start running everything for you, obviously. So let's give this a second here. 
All right, it's almost done, it looks like. So what it's going to do now is open up the page for us automatically, which is a pretty cool feature. And here we go. So we can see localhost 8080, which is the default port that we're going to be using for web applications, slash first web app underscore uh, war, war underscore exploded. And we'll change that later on. But basically, that's the default URL pattern that we're going to be using for our application or that IntelliJ specifies for you to use. But we can change that. And then also we have uh, dollar sign end dollar sign. So why does this show a dollar sign end dollar sign? That's because our GSP that was generated is, you know, that's what it has. So we can change this to whatever we want if you want to. So we can change this to uh, H1. We'll say hello or we'll say welcome to my website. And then under that, we can have some other stuff like enjoy your stay, some stupid stuff. And then we can change the title here if you want to. So we'll say um, cool website. And then if we want to update the changes, so we'll just click the refresh or whatever the button is here and click update classes and resources, click OK. And basically it's just gonna update everything without having to restart the web server, which is pretty cool. So if we go here and then reload, we can see our changes have been made without even restarting, which is awesome. So as you can see, the JSP was automatically recognized as the default page, index.gsp, just like index.html would be recognized by the default page. So if we wanted to, we could also just go back here and type index, oops, index.gsp, and it'll show the same thing. But since index is recognized as the default, you can just leave it like that if you want to. So like I said before, we don't have to use this default URL pattern. We can change it to just that. So we can just go to localhost 8080 directly. So let's go ahead and let me show you how to do that. So if we go back to our web application here, we can go to Tomcat, click edit configurations, then go to deployment. And then down here, you can specify the, the context or the, you know, the URL pattern that you want to use as the default or whatever, the roots, the roots pattern, whatever you would call it, the root route. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it blank. So that means that we'll be able to directly go to localhost 8080. So if you were to just restart this application here, um, it should show that change. And there we go. So now it opened up the page again, except this time we get localhost 8080 instead of that other stuff on the end, which is very nice. And we could even go to, uh, we can still go to index.gsp if you want to. Oops, not GSO, GSP. And it'll appear right here, very nice. And let's see what else we can do. We can also make our own HTML files or JSP files if we want to. So click web, then click new, and let's pick, let's create a regular old HTML file just for testing purposes. We'll call this we'll call this cool, so that'll be cool.html, and we'll give it an, a title of hi, and inside of here we'll say, and if you remember, I told you a second ago that anything outside of the web-inf folder besides the source folder, if it's outside of that, that means it's directly accessible. But if it's inside of the web inf folder, that means it cannot be directly accessed. It's basically hidden from the user. So we'll test that out. But first, let's add something to our body here. We'll say, yo, yo, OK? And so that's pretty simple. We're just creating a cool.html file. And um, we want to access that file by going to localhost 8080 or slash cool.html. So let's see if we can do that. So we'll update classes and resources, and it'll reload everything on our server for us. And now we can, let's try going to cool.html. And there we go, we get yo, pretty cool. So that's how you directly access a static page if you want to. But we're not gonna actually be doing this too often. We're not gonna be directly accessing static pages. This is gonna be a dynamic web application. So we're gonna be doing stuff like slash cool, which is gonna, you know, uh, that's how you that's how you access the URL pattern of cool or you can also call that a route so slash cool and it says HTTP status 404 not found because we have not created a servlet that is a, that is capable of handling the slash cool routes which we'll be seeing and exploring next episode but for now let's go back here and try moving it inside of the web inf folder so I can show you how it's actually hidden from the user so if we reload here it'll be hidden so let's just wait for this Cool. So now it should be updated. And if we go back here to slash cool.html, it is not shown anymore. So that's um, that's just proving to you that anything inside of that folder will be hidden from the user in case you don't want them to see it. So that's why also you see the web.xml folder is hidden because of course that would be bad if some user could just directly access your web.xml folder and see all your important information. That would be very not cool. 
So we'll move this back out. And yeah, that's pretty much what you can do with that. Um, we can also make a GSP if you want to. So new and go down to GSP right here. And then we can create as many GSPs if you want. And we're not gonna be making any more. We've, I mean, we've already seen what a JSP is. It's basically just HTML with some special attributes like this that you're able to use code inside of. And we'll explore how we can use code inside of GSP very, very soon. But for now, just uh, wait for that. All right, so that's all I wanna show you for this episode. I know we didn't do too much, but now at least you know how to make a simple Java web application and how to access static web pages like HTML pages and JSP pages and how to change them, change them and stuff like that. And also you understand the basic structure for these web applications now. So next episode, we'll be learning how to make Java servlets, which is the juicy stuff so that we can handle post and get requests to certain URLs, which is gonna be really powerful and really fun to work with in my opinion. If you have any questions about what I showed you this episode, feel free to leave a question in the comment section below or join our Discord server. We have a big Discord server with over 1300 members last time I checked. So if you need any help at all with your programs, you can hop into one of these help channels and get some help. You can also just hang out and get some new friends if you want to, so just make sure you click the invitation in the description below. Don't forget in the description below, I'll also leave a link to the code for this episode so you can come back to it at any time and use it as a reference. I'll leave good detailed comments around the code so you can have a good explanation in text form too, in case you don't want to watch my awesome videos again. One final thing I want to tell you about, if you want to support this channel, you can click the join button below this video and you can join this channel as a member for as low as 99 cents a month. If you join, you can get cool perks like a special Discord rank on my server, early access to these videos, and you get shouted out like you see on the screen right now. If that sounds good to you, feel free to join for, like I said, as low as 99 cents a month. All right, that's it. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, leave a like. If you want to see more, subscribe and peace.